well, Gru friends, you know things are getting serious when Marvel Epic Issue 120 comes out. Hi, my name is Darren, these are my hands, and this is GruTube, where we appreciate the art of Aragonez. Okay, today it's time we talk about the elephant in the room. I know some of you don't want to hear this, but it's time to get it out in the open, once and for all. Gru the Wanderer does not look exactly like he looked like way back in 1982. So today we're going to go all the way back to the beginning and take a look at Gru the Wanderer, the changes in how Sergio has drawn him throughout the decades. Are you ready? Let's get going. I have to be so very careful with this one. So here's how we're going to do it. I've chosen eight completely arbitrary drawings or issues of Gru the Wanderer for us to take a look at. We'll basically focus on one drawing of Gru per era and see how Sergio has changed drawing him throughout the ages. And to get us started, I've got this drawing of Gru the Wanderer from 1981. I don't know if this is the earliest drawing of Gru the Wanderer that's out there, but it's the earliest drawing of Gru the Wanderer that I've got access to. And while we'll be looking at a bunch of different things as we examine Gru through the ages, there are four things that we'll probably keep coming back to. His nose, his chin, his head, and the line that Sergio uses as he draws Gru. So, what do we have when we're looking at this drawing of Gru the Wanderer? 1981. Sergio Aragonez, Gru the Wanderer. Here's this barbarian with a horde behind him on the steps of maybe a temple. Perhaps he's rescuing this damsel from sacrifice. Who knows what's going on in this picture exactly? I don't, but what I do know is that Gru's nose is not the nose that I'm used to. His nose is flat. Yes, it's bumpy. It's somewhat gourd-shaped. It's, it's not a small nose. It's a big nose, but it certainly isn't the big, lumpy number three that we come to know in Gru. When I look at this Gru, I also see a long face. He's got a long chin and, I don't know, is his jaw almost protruding out there? Does he have like kind of an underbite, biggie-ish chin going on? Like not Arcadio style chin, but big-ish chin? Certainly bigger than the chin that we'll see on him later on. And something else that's, I think, really different from later Gru is the shape of his eyes. His eyes are like these horizontal round rectangle shapes. They may actually have that horizontal shape because his eyelids are kind of closed, but it's hard to tell for sure. His arms, not only are they big and muscular, they're chunky and bumpy. There's lots of lines and wiggles and looks like there's a lot of meat and muscle under the surface there. Take a look at his grabbing hand. Could be sketchy here, but there's also that meaty, muscly chunkiness in Gru's hand as well. Gru's legs are thin, getting thicker towards the ankles, the calves, the cankles. And if I was to say something about the line here, it's strong, it's bold, but not necessarily fluid. Anyway, 1981's Gru the Wanderer gives us an interesting starting point, or maybe even pre-starting point, as we journey through Gru through the decades. Next up, let's take a look at 1983's Pacific Comics number six. All right, we've got three big panels with two Grus in each panel, so lots of Gru to look at here. Something I think that we can notice right off the bat, a thing that always draws my eyes is his nose, and Gru's nose is undulating a lot more in 1983. It's not quite that number three shape yet, but it's got a lot more wiggle to it and a lot more pronounced bridge slash tip, bulb. It's gourd shaped. His face is, is still long, but the mouth is taking up more real estate. It's got more of a central placement, I think. So when I look at Gru, I see a lot less chin, even though he's, you know, sticking his chin out in some of these drawings. Like, look over here. 
Gru has less of a pronounced chin than he did in the 1981 drawing. His eyes are larger and rounder. His eyebrows follow the contour of his eyes. His ankles, his calves are still thicker than his thighs, especially here. And overall, the line work is still bold, still confident, perhaps a little bit more fluid and controlled. And when I'm talking about line here, I guess I'm talking about Sergio's inking of his drawings. So in 1983, we see a big difference, I think, from the 1981 Gru, and he's well on his way to what I consider to be the classic Gru of the mid to late 80s, mid to late 90s. Next up, we have 1985 slash 1986 Gru the Wanderer Marvel Epic number 12. Came out in February 1986. The cover is drawn in 1985. This is February. I think it's fair to say that this comic was probably drawn in late 1985. The story is Gru meets the Thespians, and on the two-page splash, we've got a great big picture of Gru. He's got his sword at the ready. He's looking down at the play, not understanding what's going on. And this is a great drawing for us to take a look at Gru from this era, a good two years after the Pacific Comics Gru we just looked at. So what's happening here? Well, take a look at that nose. It is a number three. That is the classic Gru nose coming in there. He's got big, round eyes, and his arms are much less chunky than the arms that we saw at least in 1981. They're fuller, they're somewhat fatter, softer, rounder. They're still strong and muscular. They're just more cartoony. The line really flows in this drawing. Gru's body is round. It's not as lumpy as we saw it in the earlier drawings. And the legs have a more consistent width or diameter all the way down to the calves and the ankles. When we look at the wrap around Gru's katana grip, we see more volume to the detail. I think within the comic, we also see more volume um, on things like Gru's headband. It's less of a flat ribbon. It's got something more of substance to it. Overall, I think Sergio's drawing style for Gru has become more cartoony. Take a look at his fingers here. He's got those sausage fingers starting to happen. I think at the end of 1985, the beginning of 1986, Sergio has really become comfortable with how he draws Gru. His model is certain. It is sure he's going to refine it over the next few years, but this is the Gru that we're going to be seeing a lot more of in the next eight to 10 years. Let's skip ahead almost five years to 1990. Here we have Marvel Epic Gru number 69. It's from September 1990, probably drawn in the spring or the summer of 1990. Just a real quick look at this drawing of Gru from the middle of page 23. Look at those skinny noodle legs there. Almost 10 years into drawing Gru comics, and those legs are as straight as can be. And then down here in the corner, what a great image for us to examine. I want to be careful about not calling this the perfect Gru, but late 80s, the beginning of the 90s, this was the height of my Gru fandom as a teenager. And so this style of Sergio's drawing of Gru will always be probably one of my favorite styles. But take a look at that exaggerated nose. Gru's nose in 1990 was an exaggerated nose, but it was a good nose. But his hair, his hair is perfect. Each strand of it is equidistant from its neighbors. A couple little hairs at the top coming out of his cowlick there. We can see that volume on Gru's headband and even in the tassel hanging down from the knot. Talking about Gru's chin and mouth here, at this point in Sergio's drawing, the features of Gru's face, his eyes, his nose, his mouth, they're taking up more real estate on Gru's head. 
So there's no way you're going to have that massive chin that we saw back in 1981. He had set good proportions back in the mid-80s. They're a little bit exaggerated sometimes by the time we hit 1990. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying we can see some changes in the way Sergio is drawing Gru. When we look at the other panels in the comic, of course, Gru's eyes are closed here. His eyes are continuing to get larger. They're big, round, cartoony eyes. The stroke of Sergio's line is confident. This is confident drawing, confident inking that we see here in 1990. Gru's mouth is deftly drawn. His thumb perfectly wrinkles his jerkin. That, with the knot in his headband, you see the substance, the volume, the dimensionality of Sergio's drawing. Again, I'm not going to call it perfect, Gru, but man, I like this Gru. Let's see what's happening five years later. This is number 120. Rejoice with me. I have it in my collection. January 1995. March 1995. I want to take a look at page 6 in Epic 120 and page 26 in image number 4. I would say that up until the mid-90s, Gru had kind of developed a pear-shaped head. But we're going to see some transitions as we go into more of an egg-shaped head. In fact, towards the end of the epic run, I think that we're starting to see an egg-shaped head on Gru. Here's a, a nice egg-shaped head as we get into the image run. Man, look at the size of that schnoz. That is so big. Too big. This is just... what I don't know what this is. His nose is almost as big as his head. Even here, that is a big nose. It's not always how his nose looks. But there are some big noses on Gru in the mid-90s. Something that's happening around here is the color of Gru is changing too. While Gru was much more pinky in the past, he's really lightening up in his color as we progress through the 90s. I don't know, maybe he was more tanned and weathered looking back in the day when he was a young man, but I think we consistently see a much lighter coloring of Gru as the decades go on. How about Sergio's pen work, his inking? I'm starting to notice in the image comics, for example, look at Gru's leg here. The line is sometimes thinner, sometimes scratchier. Perhaps because we're getting better paper, better printing, Sergio is able to give us more fine detail, and so his inking isn't as solid and thick. Maybe this is a deliberate choice to go thinner and scratchier. Perhaps Sergio is changing his technique, or perhaps he's using a different pen that achieves this different style of line. I'm not sure. But what I see in the mid-90s is what I used to call the transition to the modern Gru, but what I think I'm more comfortable calling the millennial Gru. And we're going to see that a little bit more solidly when we look at Dark Horse number one from 1998. Wow, it's so strange for me to think that Gru has been with Dark Horse Comics for over 20 years. Over half of Gru's time being published has been time at Dark Horse Comics. And so I'm going to flip with you to the middle of this comic where we're going to really look at something. But let's just enjoy late 90s Gru. Like, look at that. It's definitely not early 90s perfect Gru, but this is such a classic, well-drawn Gru right here on the inside cover. The line work is so confident. The drawing itself is so cheerful. <laughs> yeah, there's ships sinking and buildings on fire, but Gru looks like how Gru should look to me. A nice bulbous nose, not quite a pear-shaped head. I guess he's got that egg-shaped head, and I guess I like it. The legs are long, and while they're not noodly, they're parallel at least in width. Can you have parallel width legs? They're consistent width legs. Look at this stuff here. Look at that. We are seeing cartoony, expressive, confident, funny Gru. That is a big nose. And here we come to this wonderful 
two-page spread in the middle of Gru number one from the first Dark Horse miniseries. When I look at Gru here, I see his body shape becoming a little bit more triangular. His arms are perhaps even less defined than they were before. There's no definition in these arms. I'd like to call them sausages, but they're just like balloon arms. His nose is big, but it's not out of place. But his head is totally round. The headband is moving higher up. It's almost like this skull cap hair that he's got here. We have, I think, transitioned to Millennial Gru at this point. Maybe one last thing to comment on is the fringe at the bottom of Gru's tunic here. My imagination tells me that Sergio has probably drawn this fringe thousands of times at this point. And so, in the beginning, it was rough and random and jagged. At this point, 15 to 20 years along, it's almost regular in its irregularity. Sergio has drawn this combination of rips and tears and bobbles and stuff on that fringe so many times that there's almost a precision to its messiness. All right, let's check in nine more years down the road. 2007, and we have the Hell on Earth miniseries. You all know that I love Groot, right? You all know that I love Sergio Aragonés, right? I don't dislike the 2007 version of Gru the Wanderer, but I'm going to make a few comments that are going to make you think that this is perhaps my least favorite version of Gru the Wanderer. Hey, when we're analyzing all the different variations of Gru from the beginning to current days, there's going to be stuff that we really like and stuff that we like least of all. This might be the era that I like least of all. It's a good cover, though. Gru seems to have a, a little bit more color in his skin. Okay, I take that back. He has no color in his skin anymore. And I think that Sergio forgot that Gru has a chin. I know his chin always seems to have kind of just kind of gone down into his jerkin, that he doesn't really have a neck there, but that doesn't look right, does it? <laughs> We've talked pear head. We've talked egg head. This is the height of Gru's apple head. I recognize that even on this page, we see a lot of squashing and stretching of Gru's head, but there's a lot of no chin apple head going on here. And the color of Gru's hair is becoming very much the color of his jerkin. This is not like some cheap Turkish knockoff Gru, but he's not the same as the Gru that we saw 17 years ago in 1990. Can we just look at Gru's eyes here for a second? It seems like the eye on the left, the one that should be farthest away from us, is overlapping the eye on the right, which should be nearest to us. I don't know, a little bit of perspective issue? I hate to point that out, because there's so much good Gru here, too. Let's just flip to the end. We'll talk about this some other time. A lot of walking, a lot of talking. Maybe not enough action. All right. A nice close-up of Gru so that we can make some comments on the 2007 version of Gru. He's got a round head. His skin tone is pretty light. The line work is fine, and by that I mean thinner, scratchier in places. It lacks the fluidity and the confidence that I think that we've seen in other inkings of Gru. Not necessarily this particular inking, but on other pages and other drawings, other panels. And I think overall, it might have something to do with the coloring, but I think it's mostly the drawing. There's less dimensionality than we were seeing in the previous decade or so. When we look at the wrap of the katanas, when we look at Gru's headband, it just looks a little more flat to me. Everything seems a little bit more flat. And if I may... I'd like to have a quick comment on Gru's teeth. Quite often in the millennial Gru, we see a full white mouth of teeth. Here's a full white mouth of teeth. Or we see a, a solid top row of teeth. It's like a solid denture tooth here or something. I like seeing inside Gru's mouth. I like his tongue. I like some teeth, but I like individual teeth as opposed to just a block of teeth. That's a personal preference. I would much rather see these teeth on Gru 
than this mouth of teeth or this band of teeth in Gru. Those are just my preferences for what it's worth, and I know it's not worth very much. Let's skip ahead nine more years and take a look at 2016's The Fray of the Gods. Now, why am I looking at 2016's Fray of the Gods and not Tarzan, for example, which is coming out tomorrow as I record this video? Issue number three, make sure you go and pick it up. Well, Tarzan was drawn in 2017, just a year after Frey was drawn, the same year that Play of the Gods was drawn. I just happened to have an extra reader copy of issue number three of Frey of the Gods, so that's why I chose this to be the representative of this era, 2016. And you know what? There's a lot to like in the 2016 era Grew the Wanderer drawings. Let's start with Stupid Face Gru. I feel like it's been a while since we've had a big feature Stupid Face Gru with his tongue sticking out and with his finger scratching his head. I think it's looking good. Gru's running here. Gru's running there. Take a look at Gru's body in this picture here. Perhaps it's just the way that Sergio's drawing Gru striding across the frame, but he seems to have lost his massive dumpy triangular frame that we were noticing before. I wouldn't want to say that he's svelte at all, but he's returning to a little bit more of his rotund body type. And as if Sergio just heard me talking about those bands of teeth, here we have lots of individual Gru teeth. They look good. How about this drawing of Gru snoring, with his lips all a-wiggle, with his teeth a-chatter, with his tongue flipping around in there? This is almost like Mad Magazine-style Sergio drawing. I love it. It's great. It's funny. It's silly. This is what I like to see in Gru. Look at that tongue in there. There's a lot to like in Gru here. Yes, his head might be a little bit more egg-shaped, but I'd rather have an egg-shaped head than the round apple-shaped head. I don't know, I think Gru's looking good down here. He's got a good nose. The lines of Sergio's inking seem bolder, more confident. In my opinion, this is a move in the right direction, and I'm liking where the current era of Gru drawing is. It's good stuff. So there you go, from 1981 to 2021, kind of, almost 40 years of Gru. I guess actually next year, in a few months, we will be celebrating 40 official years of Gru comics. Wow. You know what? Gru has changed over the years. The way Sergio has drawn him has changed over the years. And that's okay. As an artist, you've got to keep trying new things. You've got to keep experimenting with new techniques, with new and different tools. I think that if Gru looked the same from the very beginning to the very end, that would indicate a stagnation that is more than just visual, but the ideas, the stories would be the same. Yeah, it'd be the same joke every month. We're glad to see changes throughout the years. It's expected. It's healthy. I hope you've enjoyed looking at these comics with me today. If you have, please give this video a like. Feel free to leave a comment below on what you think about how Sergio has changed his drawing style of Gru over the years. Make sure you're subscribed and that you have notifications turned on because I will be back again soon with another GruTube. Take care, everybody. Number 120, the final battle. See, Gru has teeth. <laughs>